Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing in the three minute pool and I've got Grandmaster Azme Praashvili. Zurab. From Georgia? Is that right? Yeah. Okay, my only goal in this game is to just be okay on the clock. As you guys have seen, I've had some real clock troubles, especially in these three minute games. So I've just set myself a goal of trying to stay okay on the clock. Uh, okay, so that move. I'll just go bishop f5. I'm just going to play simple, like bishop f5 and e6. Black can try to take the pawn. Uh, not anymore after he's played a3, because knight a4 would have been a problem. But um, Black can try to take the pawn early on, right after he had played e3. But uh, I think better to keep it simple. That's my Perashvili. This guy's quite a good player. I think he's more like chess politician than player these days. There's a famous headbutt incident that uh, <laughs> if you're interested in this guy, you might want to check out probably about 10 plus years ago. Really bizarre incident, actually. I won't go into it. Hmm, takes with the pawn. Okay, I like my position now. So if take, maybe I just take here. Take. Eh, both moves are good. Let's just take with the bishop. I think I'm going to win his b2 pawn. Oh, he has queen e2, though. Yeah, queen e2 is good. Never mind. Should have taken with the pawn, or with uh, the queen on b5. Hmm. Gotta play fast. I don't like bishop d7. I think that was inaccurate. Because now I can take over the file, right? Take over the c file. e4. Wants to go rook c1 soon. Definitely wants to do that. Really, right now? Huh. But I have queen b6, at the very least. I'm also just checking if I can take on c1, but I don't think that's a good idea. Nah, queen b6. Check. And if bishop e3, I have rook takes c1, just winning on the spot. So, uh, yeah, he's got to go king h1 or king f1. All right, just trade Check. this. Hmm. Okay, fork his bishop somehow. Doesn't look like it. Just bank the pawn. Okay, when he takes back. Yeah, where's my fork? Aha, maybe this move. Hit the bishop, and. If he goes bishop b3, I have bishop d3, so he's got to go bishop c2. Ah, but after bishop c2, I can play queen c5. Yeah, now he's just, he loses. Yeah. Um, I think he was losing no matter what in that position, though. That was interesting. Because if, um, if bishop c2, then this move is strong. Skewering the two bishops. And if take, I have the in-between move, sure. take on c1. Okay. Cool. Queen d4. Does he have any, any other moves? Threatening his bishop. He could play this move, queen d1. That may be forced from the looks of it. Yeah, that's the only way to deal with um, the bishop attack, avoid the skewer, and also avoid getting both of his bishops attacked. But I think, you know, several good things I can do here. Probably just take the pawn as simplest. I can go here, but black should be winning. I mean, even just like hiding this and, you know, maybe just go raiding his king side. Or throw in bishop d3 check first. Check. Mm, might be some moderate cleanup I have to do in this position, but it should be winning. Interesting. 
queen b6 is a, a move I sometimes play in the exchange Slav when they develop the bishop to f4. Because kind of the point of this setup for white is to delay this development. So after bishop f4, if black plays, like let's say the standard move, knight c6, white can try to do a setup with bishop d3 and knight ge2. And that gives him some op options in the center later, like f3 and maybe someday e4. So queen b6 is a nice way to try to disrupt that plan. Now after e3, I mentioned that queen takes b2 is possible. Um, I do know some theory associated with that line, but I just prefer to keep it simple. Knight c6. Now this is instructive because after a3, this is a common move to discourage the capture on b2. I mean, it's a useful move in general, but now if I get really greedy and do this, white has knight a4 trapping the queen. So that a3 move has taken away the b4 check from my queen. So that's a really common idea. Um, in fact, I remember playing this move on the white side of a knight or poison pawn variation when I was very young, and a player who was maybe 18 or 1900 took this pawn, and I almost immediately won the game after trapping his queen. So watch out for that a3 move. So I just developed. All of this was pretty normal. I use this rook because it's possible that this rook could be good on the queen side. And moreover, I found that it's useful to keep queen d8 as a retreat square. And if you use the other rook, rook a c8, and then you eventually play queen d8, you're disconnecting your rooks. There'll just be a queen stuck in the middle between them. They won't communicate as well. So that's why I played rook fc8. He went here. Take. That surprised me that he took with a pawn. I don't see why that would uh, be a good move. I, mean, I think bishop takes, keep the bishop's uh, diagonal open. Probably knight e4 is still problematic for him, though. He's got some communication issues. Oh, actually, I see why he might have done that. Okay, um, this is a little tactic I have, so I can go rook takes c3 in this case. And I'll take his bishop next, and I win two minors for the rook. Aha, uh -huh, that's why he did it. So I think what that means is that um, very possibly rook c1 was just a mistake. Maybe he should play... Let's say queen e2, defend his bishop more securely, also defend the b2 pawn. Mm -hmm. So after take, it, it's already kind of too late for him. Here, knight c3. Not to say he's like lost or anything, but I think black is comfortably better here. Let's just check. Yeah, engine gives a big advantage. And after take, I should have taken with the bishop. Or I should have taken the bishop, I should say. Oh, actually, the computer likes my move. In retrospect, I thought this might be better. Oh, okay, I guess he can maybe get some comp or something. Ooh, rook c7. Opposite color bishop position where he might have play with his d6 pawn. Aha. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah, so queen e2. Rook c7. He should probably just play bishop a4 directly, because with bishop d7, he almost gave me a free tempo. Yeah, here, rook c7, tick, tick. Here, rook c1. Tough position for white, because I control the only open file. And now I'm pretty sure it's going to say that this coming move e4 was a mistake. Yeah, de. If he had played fe... I forgot what I was going to do. I think I was just going to play a luft move, like h6, just to make sure there's no back rank problems. And with his structure and the dark square bishop being a poor piece and this piece being kind of loose and his king being open, black has a very large advantage. It's interesting to see that advantage so large. Minus two and it's equal material. But he did that move. Check. Yeah, and then check. I thought he would hide in the corner, but he went here. Check. Take, take. Queen d4 I had. This move's probably still good, though. Yeah, and one point I had was that if um, queen takes, I was going to play this to hit that and also threaten queen c4 check. But looking at it now, maybe he has a defense. Like what the computer's proposing, queen c3. 
Interesting. So it actually thinks it would have been better to play uh, queen d4, hitting that, hitting that, and threatening that. Also rules out queen d1. Okay, that's like essentially winning, according to the engine. Bishop b3, bishop c5. Threatening to raid his position. This reminds me a lot of a game I played against Irina Crush, where um, I had queen and two bishops against her queen and two bishops with some pawns on the board. And it was a very, actually very similar pawn structure I had, and I was black in that game too. And um, her pawn structure was weak, and her king was open. She wasn't down a pawn, like as my Parashvili here, but the decisive factor was her uh, weakened king, whereas mine was pretty safe and secure. So, okay. And I think after this, as played in the game, it's over. Yeah, there's no good move I can make. Alright, nice to get a win against this guy. This guy used to be a really, really strong player. Like, probably still is a very strong player. I'm not sure what his FIDE rating is, but... Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And please leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys.